Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I wanted to share with you the books I read in February. So I'm going to start with a couple of middle grade that I read. I read Goldiline by Jimmy Cajolius and this is a kind of like fairy tale-esque book with a little bit of like fantasy and magic and um, there's stuff in here about found family it is about a young girl called Goldie Lion and um, the village where she used to be as a young child. Um, they've kind of been um, swayed by this preacher. Um, they've become very religious and they um, thought her mother was a witch. Um, maybe her mother was a witch, but her mother um, would help people um, with herbs and, you know, that kind of stuff. And... Um, they're kind of after Goldie Lynn as well, because I think she might be a witch. Um, but she's taken up with this um, group of bandits that robs people in the forest. And uh, one day they rob a carriage that has a young boy in it. And she um, befriends this boy because she doesn't really have any other kids to hang around with. And the adventure kind of starts there. Um, what I liked about this, so I had uh, mixed feelings about this book. What I liked about it was very much the setting and the atmosphere. It really has that fairy tale magical vibe to it, which was really well done. I also really liked the family and friendship elements in this book. The relationship she has with kind of the, the leader of uh, the bandits and also the relationship she develops with the boy Tommy um, that she befriends. I did think that the book wasn't long enough. It's pretty short, I think, even for a middle grade. And we could have used some more time to develop some of these characters more. I felt it was a little rushed in places. The thing I, I really didn't like um, was the trope of using a scar to denote villainy. So the preacher in this has the scar running down his face and there was really no need of that. And um, this is a fairly recent book. I think it was like 2017 or 2018. And I think in this day and age, we need to be scrapping um, disfigurement as a trope for villainy. So those are my thoughts on Goldie Line. Um, the other middle grade I read was The People of Sparks. This is the sequel to um, City of Ember by Jean Dupro. So what I liked about The People of Sparks uh, primarily was the conflict. I liked the message. Um, it wasn't very subtle, but it is a middle grade book. But I did enjoy that conflict between people and I enjoyed how they were trying to find a compromise um, and what that looked like. I also liked the continuation of the story following the people of Ember. Um, I'm trying not to give spoilers here, but based on what happens at the end of the last book and the beginning of this book and um, how they deal with that. And I really liked the perspective from the people of Ember and how they would feel given what happened. I didn't find the setting in this one as compelling or as interesting, um, but it wasn't horrible. I think the setting was well done. Like you, you could feel the setting. I just thought it was not as compelling. And I was also missing the mystery element that the first book had. There was a lot of um, solving puzzles to try to um, get an answer. And there was one little kind of mystery riddle type of thing in this book, but it was solved immediately, like on the same page or the very next page. So I felt there could have been build up there, build up there that was missing. Um, and the other thing that I was a little bit disappointed by was um, I felt like the two main characters, the boy and girl that we followed from the first book, we also follow in this book. And in the first book, they had a lot of agency and they took matters into their own hands to try to save the people of Ember. Um, and in this one, um, even though we are following their perspectives, they don't seem to have much agency and they just seem kind of along for the ride. And I, I didn't really like that as much. So I enjoyed the book overall. Um, I will be continuing the series. I think I was just missing a lot of the elements from the first book that I had liked so much. So overall enjoyed it, um, but just a couple little things that um, were kind of disappointing compared to the first book. Another book I read was Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe. This is a uh, graphic memoir. It is the author's story um, of discovering air identities 
those identities being that the author is non-binary and a so maya kobabe uses e air m pronouns if i'm remembering correctly um but i really liked this book i think it really helps build understanding around things that can be quite confusing confusing to like cis people i think mostly and i appreciated the author's own admission i guess of feeling confused over our own identity and what it took to kind of wade through that and figure out who you was and we kind of got taken along that journey so i appreciate how the book was structured to do that so yeah overall i thought it was very um interesting perspective and i thought the panels and how um, the illustrations were drawn, really provided a lot of emotion to the story. The next book I want to talk about is Regeneration by Pat Barker. This is the first in a trilogy. It is um, World War I fiction, but it features a couple of uh, characters who are um, were real people. So this book is set in a war hospital in the UK, and we follow a psychiatrist who works there, and we also follow many different patients, many soldiers who have um, basically been shipped back to the UK, who have been admitted to this hospital, and who are struggling um, with mental health in many, many different ways. One of the main characters is an officer called Siegfried Sassoon, who was a um, real historical figure. He was a poet, and he wrote a declaration um, basically um, condemning the war and that's why he was um, sent to this hospital um, instead of he could have been like imprisoned court-martialed but one of his uh, fellow officers I think it was um, basically talked to some people pulled some strings to get him sent to this um, war hospital instead um, basically saying that uh, this declaration like was a, was because of mental illness. What's really interesting about Sassoon's perspective is even though he condemns the war and he's basically kind of, it's almost like he's gone on strike in a way as a soldier, even though that's the case, he does not consider himself a pacifist. And I, find, I found that uh, perspective really interesting. Sassoon develops a friendship with uh, Wilfred Owen, who was a World War I uh, poet, one of my favorite poets. And um, that happened in real life. He kind of uh, mentored uh, Owen when they were both at this hospital. So I, I really liked the um, character work in this book. Um, I think it's very complex. There's a lot to dissect. There's a lot of diversity of like opinion in this book among the different patients, among the different doctors that you meet. Most of the World War I fiction I've previously read, which isn't a lot, um, admittedly, um, has been set more kind of like in, in the action of war. And this one is set kind of on the sidelines away from the action. And so you're dealing a lot more with the aftermath of um, what they would have called shell shock, PTSD, um, various uh, mental health struggles that these soldiers are going through. It was really interesting to see how each man was affected. There was a real kind of, even though they were all affected by the war, there was this sense of like individual sh struggle and isolation. And there was this overwhelming sense of this feeling of, of shame that a lot of them had, um, shame associated with having a quote-unquote breakdown. So yeah, re really interesting perspectives and character work. So I am eager to get to the second book because I really, really enjoyed this. Um, well, enjoyed. It. It is, um, it does feel quite bleak at times. It's not a, the easiest read. There are some things that are um, genuinely quite horrifying, but um, I just thought it was really well done. And the last book that I completed in February that I want to talk about is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. Kesey? I forgot to look up how to pronounce his name. Um, Ken Kesey, I think. So um, I read this as part of a little reading project, vlogging um, project I'm doing this year where I am retrying books that I either didn't like or DNF'd, and I had DNF'd this 
back in high school, I will um, link to that vlog um, in the cards and in the description box. But I will kind of summarize my overall feelings. So I did enjoy this book a great deal. I had a couple problems with it, but I think like the overall experience of reading this was um, quite intense. Like I liked the book, but it was quite intense, um, quite stressful to read. I really enjoyed the writing and the character work that's in this book. And I think there's some real um, good conversation in here um, about institutions. Uh, and when I say conversation, I mean everything in here is very subtle. There's no beating you over the head with a message, but but it's a there, this conversation about uh, institutions in general, obviously specifically about what would have been called mental asylums at the time. This was written in the early 60s. But I think a lot of what's in here could be uh, broadened in conversation of institutions in general and what we do with people who um, we deem not safe for society or who aren't um, ready to be integrated into society. What do we do with people who aren't quote unquote fit for society in some way? And I think it's written with a lot of compassion for people struggling with mental illness. There are some funny things that happen in here, but it never, it never felt like the patients themselves were being laughed at or being made the butt of the joke. And I'm, I'm sure there is a lot in here that is outdated in terms of how we think about mental illness, but, um, but I do think the compassion does come across in how it's written and how the um, characters are written and how um, they develop uh, friendships with each other and how they are navigating this institution that is claiming that it's it's built as this like therapeutic wonder at the, how it's helping people um but they're not feeling helped they're feeling trapped one thing i will say that it's, it was a little bit grating um but not surprising considering the 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 fact that it's a male author and the fact of the time in which it was written in the early 60s um the the depiction of women <laughs> is not the best in here um, this is a very male book. It just feels very male to me. It is very much of its time, like I said, the depiction of women, uh, not great, but overall, I think, um, all of the pros definitely outweigh that for me. So I'm very glad that I finally read it. So those were the books that I read in February. If you'd like to have um, a chat about any of them, please comment below. And thank you as always for watching and we'll chat soon. Take care.